In this tutorial, we are going to look at the mysteries of the path controls. Yes, sir. This is going to be a lot of fun. So uh, here we have one object and one path. Very simple. It starts there and it goes to there. So let me turn this sideways uh, so that you can see what's going on. Um, I'm going to show you this based on just looking at the path in a very simplified form to start. All right, so there we go. The path is one straight line, and these are the path controls. They are always shown whenever a transition is selected. Very good. And so we're just going to go right down the list and tell you what all these things mean. Now, the cool thing about this is that paths are actually Bezier curves under the hood, but we figured out a way of letting you control these Bezier curves in three dimension without getting any funny uh, kinks or buckles or nasty bumps in them, all right? So here we go, arch. Let's start with arch. As you raise it, you get in, ha, <laughs> arch. Yay, now anybody familiar with Bezier curves knows that this could be created if you had a control handle about this long and it was pointed sort of in this direction and you had another control handle at this end and it was pointed in that direction and you'd get an arch. So what this does is this allows you to give a, uh, a small arch to a, uh, a path or a really, really, really big one, okay? Very simple. Arch direction lets you control what direction that that arch is pointing. Now, I'm going to flip this thing around to the side so you can see what's going on. And you see when it's pointed straight up, the uh, the path is pointed straight up. And as you rotate it around, you see what I'm doing over here. As I rotate it around, the arch uh, points down, the path points to the left, to the side, and back up again. All right, so that's how the arch control works. Now, anyone who's tried to adjust Bezier curves in three dimensions where where the uh, this does not look like a nice graceful arch right if you look at it from this end you from this angle you can see how it's so nice and graceful from here it looks really funky it looks like this really sharp thing and the control handle would be sticking up here somewhere if I was trying to move this down or move this off to the side you'd end up with just a horrible looking path so you see what we've done is we've given you the power of Bezier's but uh, abstracted it so that it's super duper easy to work with. So you can adjust the arch at any time. Even if it's at some crazy angle like this, you still get a completely yummy, wonderful arch. Okay, so that is the basics of how these path tools work. The rest of them are all um, variations on a theme. Okay, so let's take a look at this one here, arch center. Now the center of the arch you see is right there. That's the part with the biggest bow to it, the bulge, right? If I move it towards this side of the path, you see it's closest to where the object started. If I move it towards this side of the path, of, a, of this little line here, the bulge then goes over towards the, where the path ends. Okay, so you see as it moves along, the end of the path is going to be at the end of the transition right there. And the beginning of the path is going to be over here towards the beginning of the transition. You see how that works? So this lets you get drop-in moves is what this does. If you're looking at something, say, let's see, okay, so it's going to start here and it's going to end there. If I move it like this, okay, I'll show you what we're going to do here. If I take this and I bump the center over there, and then look at it like this. What's going to happen is it's going to look like the object whisks away and then drops straight down. Bang. Okay? So it lets you adjust the timing. If you don't have this on here, what ends up happening is it looks like it goes out, but then it takes a long time before it sort of follows down, before it falls down. And that's because you have all these, all these individual frames are sort of jammed up in perspective. It's the perspective that's causing this. Of course, it wouldn't look like that from this angle. It would be very nice and graceful. Okay, But if you take this and you bump it out towards the end like that, you get this really nice drop effect where the object swings out and then drops almost straight down, bang, into position. Okay, So that's what Arch Center can do for you. Very cool. Now let's put that back and take a look at Overshoot. Here we go, zero. Okay, what overshoot does is um, it, it, well, it overshoots. It's easier to just sort of look at it. You see what happens is it makes the path shoot backwards and then come around. Now, this is the start overshoot. The end overshoot will make it go backwards in the other direction. Notice, however, what's happening here. It starts and it's, it, it pushes it toward 
the original pose and then it pushes it even a little further and at a certain point it will then bring it down because it's overshooting. What's really happening is the Bezier handle is just rotating around the end. If you overshoot too much it will then rebound and go down on the bottom which is actually a really really cool look. Um, you know this would take lots of keyframes to try to get this thing to look like this but here it's very 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 simple. So you might wonder how to make it overshoot further. Say for instance you want it here but you want it to overshoot farther. Well you just point it to the maximum amount that it'll go to which is about right there and then you increase the arch. So when you do that of course it's pulling it up here it's also giving you more arch to work with and then it's a little bit of juggling to get that overshoot into the right spot. But see, you see here now it's gone much further than the original place. So you start this and it'll go whing out like that. Whing. <laughs> I like the sound effects. Sorry I'm a sound effects guy. That's what they like to call me. Okay, always did that. Okay, so that is what overshoot start does. Overshoot end, of course, does the exact same thing, but it'll overshoot <laughs> the end. So now it comes down and whisks into position just like that. Okay, now flatten. What flatten does is, you guessed it, it makes it flat. <laughs> so what's going to happen is this. It pulls down. This is flatten start. So it's going to take the Bezier handle that's controlling here and it's going to pull it down until it's lined up with the start and the end points. Okay, when it is fully lined up, which is at 100, it's 100% 100 flattened at that point. You see it's the same as if the Bezier handle was pointed straight there. So it comes out and then the other handle starts to influence it. Of course, if I pulled the other end down here, we end up with a straight line because we flattened it completely. We flattened the start and the end, but usually don't do that. If you continue with flattened start and go even further, you end up with that upside down sort of a whiskeroo um, French curve type of a path again. Now notice that even though the path is going crazy, if you look and see all the little dotted lines on, along there, you see the little dots, those are the individual frames. No matter what you're doing to the path, the frame rate is kept really nice so that it doesn't uh, it doesn't bunch them together. A lot of times you'll see over bunching happen along these curves and you see we've done a pretty good job of making sure that that doesn't happen for you. And we'll turn that back on and take a look now at we did flatten, we did start, and now let's take a look at twist. So what twist does is, you guessed it, it twists the object so we'll look at it straight down the end and then start twisting this little guy up. So you see what's happening now is it's doing a really crazy twist to it. If you twist 360 degrees, you see it starts here, twists all the way around once, and that gives you this nice corkscrew pattern, uh, which will create some pretty funny looking things uh, if you animate them all together. This is really nice for creating this type of motion where it looks like um, uh, leaves are sort of fluttering around, that sort of thing. You can put a higher number in here by just typing. So if we go, jump up to 720, you see now we've got two revolutions, just like that. OK. And, uh, and so that's how twist is, is going to work for us. It just twists it, gives, gives it a nice corkscrew. If you want a bigger or smaller radius, you adjust the arch. So if I make the arch smaller, you see it's making it a nice, small little little twisty thing there. Okay, and of course if I increase the arch it's going to increase the radius of that twist. So you see how that all works. Okay, now one of the things that we get to play with here having a procedural animation system is multiple objects. Okay, when multiple objects are all working at the same time it starts to be really pretty. Uh, the paths, that the shapes that can, the, sh the shape that the paths can go in become very very beautiful. So let me show you how we do that. It's really simple. Um, we're going to start off by simply making some more X's. Uh, there, 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 there. Five, six, seven. Okay. When we do that, and we'll select it, you see now we're working with multiple paths at the same time. So when we've got this guy here, if we move these guys all along. You see they're all going to be cascading. Well, we've got Cascade turned on, too. Let's not do that yet. Okay, let's turn down the Cascade. And you see now these are all moving at the same time. 
Once we do add cascade, you see how it's, this is this is such a nice feature. Uh, you're able to adjust the shape of these paths and the distance that they're moving, all working at the same time. You see, trying to get all these paths lined up, especially if you had to change the direction like this. See now, we've got them flying out like that. So this is a really cool type of effect. Say you wanted them right here. You wanted the objects to end here, but you wanted them to fly past the screen. Well, by doing this, you see, they're cascading. You see how big they are now? And then they're going to fall down into position one at a time and drop in just like that. Add a little overshoot to the end, like that. And what you end up with is this, where they swarm, where they swarm out and then fall into position. So cool and so easy to do. The cool thing about this program is that, you know, you just you never even have to stop playing it. You can just let it loop like this. And now you see I can adjust the overshoot on the fly. I can adjust the cascade. And I say, well, let's see a little bit less cascade now, nah, a little bit more cascade. That spreads these guys out. You see, every time you do it, it's just readjusting what's going on. So somewhere along here, you're going to find the animation look that's just right for what it is you're trying to do. Let's see. So let's turn Cascade off for the time being, and let's look at some more of these uh, controls. So we had Arch and Arch Direction. You know, let's talk about the direction first, because that one will be really pretty to work with. Okay, so we've got these guys, and there they all are, and there are their paths. Now, the arch direction, um, as I was saying, you can make these point in any direction that you like, but the cool thing, since they're all procedural, is that now we can adjust them in ranges. So, for instance, if we use the even spread option, uh, we get these two little sliders, sorry, two little arrows right there, and a blue uh, line connecting them. You can click on the blue line. Yeah, you can click on that and then adjust this range at the same time. So you see what you're able to do is get these really, really cool um, motion paths uh, based upon the sort that you want to do. You can collapse them in closer. You can drag one arrow out farther uh, like that. And then when you're playing these guys back, of course, they'll all go along their own motion path. So it makes handling this sort of stuff, which would be a very complicated type of thing to do if you had to do this all by keyframes and all by hand and it makes it super interactive and very very easy to work with okay so that one's even spread reverse spread uh, flips it so that uh, instead of this being the first path it uh, it's the last one so it just flips the whole thing and it reverses how these guys are moving now these are actually can be sort of fun when you play these back <laughs> you'll get different types of effects. Okay, we can increase the arch. Oh wow, that is cool. I need to save that as a preset. Or a very small type of arch. Looks like they jumble up. Okay, so that one is the reverse spread. We also have two-point spread. Now what this does is it doesn't play basketball. What it does is it uses the two arrows as the spread. So every other item will have either the uh, the left spread or the right spread, uh, the left arch or the right arch. Okay, so like that. That's how they'll move. Um, and when you put a little cascade on them, of course, it jumbles them up a little bit more like this. Again, you're able to do motion that you just normally wouldn't even get to imagine. Three-point spread uses the left arrow, the right arrow, and wherever the center is. So what we have here is you see we have we have um let's adjust it like this. Okay? So you see what's going on is this one's going to the left, this third one is going to the right, and this one is going halfway between the two. So that will give you an entirely different look as well. Okay? All right, so that's three point spread. Uh, random spread assigns a different angle between these two angles it'll assign a different random angle to each one of these guys all right so when they all go it's like this you can uh, you can create a nice quite a nice mix of motion uh, just all randomly going off in their own direction okay so that's what all the different types of spreads do let's take a look at the types of arches so right now we'll set the arch here. Arch is set to 10. 
When we set the arch style to even spread, we get a second slider, and that lets us adjust the height independently. So here we have our, um, oop, got this backwards. There we go. Okay, so we're looking at it like this, and you see the arch is now, uh, the low arch is right here. Or that's a, an arch of 17. You can adjust that. And then you can adjust the height of the highest arch up here, which is 58. And if you click on the little rectangle in between the two arrows, so you can you can move both of them up or down at the same time. So what this allows you to do is, again, get this great looking kind of motion where the objects are all moving at different different arches. So it doesn't give you the same motion every time. Very cool sorts of stuff. Reverse spread just reverses it. So instead of the left to right, it's right to left. Two point spread again does the same thing where it uses the two angles. And now you see every other one goes low, high, low, high, low, high. Just like that. Okay. Three point spread goes low, medium, and high. See, there's the low one and low one. Here's a medium, medium, and then high and high up there, low, low, low. So that's how the arches are going to work there. Spreads all the guys out, brings them all back together again. Random spread, again, does a random amount of arch between the range, in the center of the range, and randomly assigns it to every object. Now, if you don't like the way that the random is working, what you can do is this. Uh, just pick it again. So, for instance, right here we've got um, this object. The second one from the right is the one that's the highest. If I don't want that one to be the highest, I can pick random again. That will change the seed, and now you see get a different type of randomization. So, pick it again, and maybe I like that one best. Okay? So, you say, hey, that's pretty cool. I'm going to go work and work with that one now. Very nice. Okay. So, arch, arch direction. Direction style, twist, overshoot. Oh, yeah, actually, you could twist all of these guys up around like that and then get all sorts of crazy motion. This is really, really cool. We had a, uh, I did an animation once where I had leaves falling and circling in the sky, all falling into position. So nice, easy to do, and very, very fast. So there you go. That is a quick example of how the shape of the path can become so beautiful and controllable.